before we get started, Action VFX is running their Black Friday sale with huge savings on all the assets you need for realistic compositing. Get up to 80% off our entire site, including full collections like directional explosions, bundle deals for complete categories, and our first ever course intro to Comfy UI. Act fast, the sale ends Friday, November 28th. A lot of changes are coming to the nuke that we know and love, including a few of the beta features that are now officially exiting beta. Our friends over at the Foundry gave us a sneak preview of the brand new Nuke 17, and it's going to make compositing complex elements so much better, specifically in the 3D realm. I'm going to use the Humby model from Action VFX in a scene to highlight the new changes for you. We're going to walk through importing a USD scene into your Nuke project and applying some of the cool new features available in the latest version of Nuke. Doing compositing work on a 3D scene is not for the faint of heart. Nuke 17 alleviates a lot of the common complex problems that pain VFX compositors all around the world with improved 3D scene integration, streamlined image projections, refined reflection processes, more motion blur control, and constraint functionality. We'll quickly dive into each one so that you can see how it works to improve your life. Once you open up Nuke 17, you'll find that a few things are different. My favorite general changes are that ACES 2.0 is now supported natively for modernized support of more color spaces. And the TVI Scale Upscaler has much better performance, boasting 98 times faster on GPU and 26 times faster on CPU. Those numbers are crazy and the results are even better. This is a real-time application, so you can see just how fast it is. Now, to get started with the big updates, we have to explore the 3D Geo Node ecosystem that is rolling out of beta. Importing a USD or Alembic scene into your Nuke project is easier than ever, and still extremely customizable. When using Geo Import, you can quickly pick and choose which elements get imported using the scene graph to streamline your processing time and keep compositing simple. If you selected too many items or didn't select enough, you can easily go back to make changes to your import selections. To make your life easier, you can also filter by prim type. Within the GeoNode ecosystem, there are a few new and a few improved tools. Existing camera data can quickly be applied to your scene thanks to the new Geo updates. Like with Geo Import, you can quickly select your desired camera from the scene and it will automatically populate the values needed to get a proper result. This imported data is now permanently preserved with the new non-destructive knob editing. You still have the ability to make changes, but if you mess anything up, you can quickly revert back to the default by toggling no change. Similar to the 3D camera, light data can also be applied directly from the Geo Import selections. There is a new look and functionality for the lights within your 3D viewer. The appearance of the types of lights in your scene has been updated with controls available in the viewer to quickly make changes. For faster identification, the light interface in the viewer also updates with the color of the light. Throughout your node tree, you may need to isolate certain meshes to make changes to a certain geometry, and quickly making a branch and using the geo mask is the easiest way to accomplish this. Within the geo mask, simply select the meshes you want to apply changes to, and add all of your additional geo nodes after it, ensuring that each node has default selected as the mask to ensure the changes only affect what is intended. Once you're finished, just add the geo clear mask and any subsequent geo nodes will affect the original meshes in that selection. This is a great way to break apart your 3D scene and avoid a messy node tree. Nuke is now going to integrate Material X. Material X support is in beta, which means Autodesk support surface shaders will import directly. This isn't ready for production yet, but it's worth testing if you're in a Maya to Nuke pipeline. Scanline Render has also gotten a major overhaul to help you get more customizable and realistic results. The biggest changes are tailored motion blur selections to select exactly what you need to apply motion blur to, as well as new ray depth support. We'll go more into how this affects your workflow in just a bit. Skip all the material creation if you simply have an image you want to project onto an object. Let's say I wanted to project this existing texture from the render, but I wanted to make a few changes to it first. Instead of retexturing and going back to the 3D guys to make changes, I can quickly change the appearance right here by projecting my rendered plate onto the mesh and adding a few nodes in between. Up until now, this has been one of the banes of my existence, reflection replacement. It used to require a lot of manual work, but now it's just a few clicks away. Using the same USD, we can select the individual meshes that we want to project our new reflection on within GeoBind material. You can even save time by using the mesh eyedropper to quickly select the meshes you want to apply the reflection to, instead of having to find them in the scene graph. 
I'll quickly attach this animated HDRI to an environment light after the GeoBind material with the reflection node attached. And we can see that we now have a custom reflection just like that. But we can also see that now I have reflections coming through from objects that should be solid. To fix this, all I have to do is add a new GeoBind material and select the object that should be obstructing the visibility of the other meshes and add a solid black fill shader. Now I can apply this reflection over my scene using a plus or screen operation in a merge node. There is a lot of functionality built into the reflection node to refine reflections and maximize customization, including reflection percentage, which will essentially act as an opacity slider for your reflection mesh. Bringing this value all the way down will result in a glass-like material. Additionally, you can change the reflection tint and transmission tint, and so much more. If your reflection is looking a little odd in places, be sure to set the max ray depth in your scanline render node to ensure you're getting the proper number of bounces for a realistic effect. You don't have to use the reflection node just for reflections. You can also leverage it for refractions within your scene. You can use the knobs to generate great refractions by tweaking a few knobs like reflection percentage, IOR, and Fresnel bias. Just make sure that both sides is selected for your visibility. This is where ray depth controls in scanline render come in handy. If you have complex reflective geometry, you'll need to increase your ray options to ensure that multiple reflection bounces will occur. The higher your ray values, the more bounces and realism you will get. Easily non-destructively attach compositing items to your meshes using the GeoTransform node. I've got this card here, and let's say I want this to be something like exhaust smoke from our Humvee. I can simply add the GeoTransform node, select a few vertices on my Humvee, and then snap it to the vertices. From here, we can animate it to the car, and we have a few options like translate, rotation, and scale. Then we'll choose the frame range that it will be applied to. This works great if your animation is final because doing it with the GeoTransform bakes the keyframes in. However, there is a new node that I recommend using for this functionality, GeoConstrain. GeoConstrain works in a bit more flexible way in that if the animation changes, the functionality of what you're trying to accomplish remains the same. Simply set the constraint type to parent and make your changes based upon that. All of these changes are going to be huge for compositors and we've just barely scratched the surface. These are just the functions and tools that I'm personally most excited about, but there are so many more functions and tools coming in the final build of Nuke 17. And we'd like to know which feature is going to save you the most time. Let us know down in the comments. If you'd like to start playing around with these new features yourself, the public beta is out and ready for you to get your hands on. Check out actionvfx.com to get all of the assets you need to get the most out of this latest version of Nuke. I'm excited to continue playing around with all of these new features inside of Nuke 17, and I hope you are too.